Welcome back to Manly, where we've just had a dynamic start to the 97 St George Bank Triathlon GP. The winner of the first race was Miles Stewart, Brad Bevan and Chris McCormack right behind him. Guy Leach to wrap up the race. Well, to me, it was just amazing that Miles can come off such a big winter and he's in such great form. Chris McCormack has chucked a spanner in the works and Brad Bevan, well, he's going to have his work cut out for him this year. Di Holden, how did you see the bike and the run leg? Well, I think it just shows if you make one mistake, you're gone. Uh, Miles and Chris are training partners, so they're obviously paying dividends. And I did hear a whisper that uh, someone yelled out to Spencer Smith, save yourself for the next race. To me, it seems like... To me, it seems like the surf's going to play some part in, especially the next race, with, with swim being last. But they are just so tight now, and we're in for just an amazing season. As we prepare for race two, let's have a quick look at our viewers' competition for 97. Okay, let's go. Simply pick up an entry at any St George Bank branch, watch the GP, answer some very easy questions, and you'll be in the running for the ultimate sports lovers' holiday. Wimbledon, the world's premier tennis tournament. The US Open, the world's most prestigious golf tournament. Or an Ashes test at the home of cricket, Lords. Take your pick. You'll receive tickets to the event of your choice. Qantas Air Travel, plus you and your partner will each receive a $1,000 Polo Ralph Lauren wardrobe. So visit your nearest friendly St George Bank branch, grab an entry, and keep watching the St George Bank Triathlon GP. Second race about to begin. Let's have a look at the format now. This time it is run, cycle, and whoops, we finish with a swim. And I say that because the surf out there is still big. And what awaits us, Mark Fuel? Well, I think that the speed will be on from the start. I think we'll see the likes of Greg Welsh and Jamie Hunt from New Zealand and Chris McCormack, who was stoked with his placing then, pushing the pace early on to try and get a bit of a lead gain on the bike. And they're off and racing. 30 of the world's best triathletes out there to hurt each other for the pleasure of you viewers at home and the crowd. At and there's already a crash. Oh, somebody was virtually pushed over. Glenn Mangum of the United States fell in what was a very, very rough start. And I saw a couple of hands go out. I think it was less of a push and more of a, just a, a guarding effort there. Some of the guys were feeling themselves going. They leaned across and Glenn was in front of them and down he went. The 24-year-old resides mostly in Japan these days, still a US citizen, of course. And have another look at that fall and just try and make out what happened. Obviously, it was just a couple of feet catching one another. Right-hand side of the pack, there it is. And there you go. For protection, the guys just leaned and, uh, yep, Jerome Sants on there taking a look around at Glenn Mangum, and I can, I'm sure the look on his face said sorry, but uh, there was very little else expressed. Well, Glenn might have been trying to adopt the tactics of his uh, national sport gridiron there by trying to block some of the other competitors, but uh, that can happen in a tight pack like that. You clip somebody's heel and you will go down, and there's Spencer Smith out in front at the moment with the, uh, the trademark bandana around his head. In fact, his father Bill was wandering around with one on his head earlier as well. John O'Hall up there, the former Australian duathlon champion and perhaps the strongest cyclist in the world of multi-sport today and Greg Welsh in third place at the moment. Well this race is set up for John O because he was intending to do a lot of damage on the bike. I think he's far and away technically the best cyclist in this field. He has had a very very big background in, in cycling. In fact he was third in the Sydney stage of the Cycle Classic and he hopes to create some carnage on two wheels. Very strong runner as well as Fuley pointed out so if he can stay up with them uh, on the run, he can uh, do something quite exciting on the bike and then, well, the swim, he's just going to have to take pot luck because that is by far his weakest leg. I think the third race will suit him more. That starts with the bike, but he's very well placed at the moment. Oh, we see some of the competitors hurdling the, uh, the Rexona and St George signs there because these competitors are tightly packed. Also, right up there in the lead group is Chris Hill. Now, Chris is only 21 years of age and he performed very well in the International Grand Prix. In fact, he came second behind Brad Bevan overall at the International Grand Prix in Hawaii on his 21st birthday. And so he's had a lot of experience in this type of racing in the last year, and he's a very strong runner. He can then hang on on the bike, and he's also a great swimmer. Wears glasses when he's not competing. His nickname is The Professor, and he said when asked what his favourite leg was, he's right. <laughs> Spencer Smith leading. John O'Hall putting some pressure on. Greg Welch, disappointed obviously with his first race, is now prominent in the second. Miles Stewart is up there as well with Chris McCormack, Chippy Slater, Brad Bevan on their shoulders. That's your top six. Beyond that, there's a little bit of dropping off going on. I talk about 
Athletes like Jamie Hunt, Greg Bennett, Jason Meadows finding the pace just a little stiff right now. They have some catching up to do. And on screen, you can see the distance there between those competitors. So the lead runners are starting to forge a bit of a gap here in the second of our three races this afternoon. Well, it's a two-kilometre run, and I think we saw Welshie make a little bit of a move before because he won't want these two in the front to work together on the bike because they may get away. Of course, the only official guide to the St George Bank Triathlon GP is Australian Triathlete magazine. Here it is. It's a bumper 116-page edition, your complete guide to the Grand Prix. In the special liftout, you'll find maps of all the courses, the point scoring system, plus complete profiles of all the athletes. But there's much more. Check out the road tests of the top-of-the-range bikes and sell your old one to Australian Triathlete Classifieds. Get online coaching help, a complete event calendar and the latest results at the Australian Triathlete Internet site. The St George Grand Prix Feature Edition. It's essential reading and it's out now. And this issue also has fascinating articles on the amazing Greg Welch. This is the only major event he hasn't won. Jackie Gallagher, who is defending her championship win last season in the GP. And Nicole Andronicus, one of the most exciting prospects in the world of triathlon, formerly a pentathlete, is now absolutely splitting them apart in her new sport. John O'Hall doing the same as he forges to the lead. In this second of the three men's races, Spencer Smith behind him from Miles Stewart, then Chris McCormack, Greg Welch and Brad Bevan in single file, Chippy Slater working hard to keep up with those leaders. In fact, had to put on a bit of a spurt out of that turn. Andrew Johns is also prominent. Greg Bennett behind him with Shane Reed, Jamie Hunt, Jason Meadows, Troy Fiddler. Paul O'Brien is still up there. Great to see the young fellow doing well. Locke Volmerhaus, Eamon Nunn, Ralph Zietzen from the Netherlands. I'm sure he's happier on dry land than he is in that manly surf. Andrew Noble, Chris Hill, Simon Knowles, as we hear the bell lap in the background. Ornelas of Brazil, Carnell, Mangum, Sanson and Daniel Simon, the man they call Wookie from Berlin, is at the tail. This pace is hot. At the moment, John O'Hall is still out in front. He's a former professional cyclist, but he still holds an age record for the city to surf, so he isn't any slouch. It's taken him some time to perhaps adjust his body to running again when he changed from cycling back over to running. He did suffer some stress fractures, as tends, tends to happen when you are putting in long miles on the run. But here he is, out in front of some of the best triathletes in the world he'll be very comfortable on the bike and it's just a matter of how well he can perform in the run and Greg Welsh is going for it now. Returning to our leaders here of course and Welch has put on a surge he's taken them out, Smith is trying to go with him so is Stuart Hall has dropped back to fifth now behind McCormack and Bevan looks to be in a lot more distress than the others although you never know with the croc but uh, he doesn't look to be comfortable that's just Brad's running style. He does tend to lull his head a little bit. His shoulders roll slightly, but he's still able to hang in there. And as they go into transition, this will be frantic. Well, this is going to be the leading pack on the bike. There's no question about that. And what a formidable group of athletes this is. Unbelievable. Welch, Bevan, Stewart, Smith, the Cormac. I mean, it's great for him to be up there. Chippy Slater having enormous trouble with his helmet. Roaring in there was the number 19, Shane Reed. So hopefully he'll be well placed too. Greg Bennett, we just saw leave transition. And with such short distances as they help each other separate the bikes, Di Holden, it's very important that they get clean transitions. Oh, before we go to Di, here's obviously a major problem for McCormack. That is a disaster. Well, he's got a flat tyre. They're changing it very quickly, but he was in the lead group. And this it will be very distressing for him. You can see they're trying to change it as quickly as possible. Chris is, is just hoping they can do it quickly so he can get out there. But any chance of him being up there with the leaders, that's gone. Oh, Chris says it all with that 